seen before and if you haven't my name's Zena and this is from the She Shed France. Um, today for those of you who've been before I'm not in the She Shed I'm in our office space in, in our loft. Um, we've got people staying in the She Shed at the moment so I can't work there. So today's video I'm going to be filming up here and I'm going to be moving back today to talking a bit more about notions of mindfulness and flourishing. You'll have just seen the word come up on the screen, H-Y-G-G-E. Now I used to think it said HIG or something of that um, nature. I have more recently been told that actually it is pronounced HUGA. And it is a Danish philosophy that has a particular approach to life. And I've been interested in looking at it because of its links to mindfulness. So Huga is a philosophical approach that a lot of Danes sign up to and follow. It became huge in the UK at one point, and I must say I'm somewhat late to the party. Apparently in 2016 it was the Oxford Dictionary Word of the Year. So you can see that it had a significant influence at that point. And I know that lots of books were published about it. And I suppose I was ignoring it at the time because I felt it was a fad rather than something that was important. But now I've had a little bit more time to look at it you start to see that it's an approach that is very mindful. There are lots of key concepts that are central to Huga. So it is about the good life, as we might say with Aristotle, but it um, has some very significant aspects to it. So there is the appreciation of family life. There, is, there are notions of community, about being engaged in your local community and being part of it. And also about enjoyment of life and how we go about enjoying our lives. Much of this is linked to, not exclusively, but is linked to spending time in an outdoor environment. And finally, one of the things that's important with Huga is taking time to enjoy relaxing activities. So that might mean putting on some nice warm socks, making a cup of hot chocolate, getting a good book and sitting by the fire, um, and obviously reading a book. Um, what you'll see is that this relates back to concepts of cosiness. And um, I'm going to talk about a few more notions of cosiness that come from other cultures and other languages. What I think is particularly interesting is that these concepts of cosiness, of particular philosophical approaches to life, don't have tra direct translations in English and so we don't have anything that's the same um, in English culture or UK culture or nor in American culture as far as I can tell or Canadian. Um, so we have to look to these other languages and other countries for these concepts. Um, the Swedes have lagom which is about having sufficiency, having enough but it doesn't have that overtone that we often have within certainly English and American culture of there being a certain element of deprivation. So whilst they have sufficiency and um, enough, it, it isn't about depriving oneself. The Norwegians have the notion of free lutz live, which um, is quite a difficult one to say. Um, and this is a philosophical approach that is deeply rooted in nature and about spending time outside and enjoying our environment and what our view, the views that we can see, what's around us and so on. And includes notions of forest bathing, which of course, if you have engaged in mindfulness, is something that you may already have come, come across. Gemuchlichkeit is a term used by Germans and Austrians. And again, it's about co comfort and coziness. 
but it's also about sociability um, and a welcoming environment. So it should be sociable, affable, relaxed. The only term that's derived from the UK is kutch, and actually that has a number of different meanings. A Welsh word, um, some people refer to it as a cuddle, some people refer to it as a hiding place, but again it has that concept of snuggling up with other people in a warm, cosy environment. So we see some of that there. Finally, probably my favourite term of them all is the Icelandic, which I am going to lift my page up to read it because I won't actually get it right otherwise. But glug a vjur is the best way that I can say it and I'm certain I haven't got it right. But glug a vjur um, is when you're enjoying time inside because the weather outside is the type that's lovely to look out at but not so nice to be in. So they talk about the notions of the fact that it's window weather, which I think is a fantastic term. So you look out and you have these beautiful views and so on, but if you go outside, you'll be cut like a knife by the coldness of the air. So again, they have the window weather where you are being cosy indoors, watching it from within. Given my raison d'etre is to talk about mindfulness and flourishing and to link that to creativity, one of the things, the questions you might be watch, raising now having watched this amount of the video is what on earth is she going on about and why, why is this important? Well, actually, if you listen to those different concepts, you'll see that there are some really central themes. They're about self. They're about environment and they're about others. And all of those things, if we're thinking about flourishing and if we're thinking about mindfulness, those are things that we are thinking about. We have to think about self. We have to be aware of how we look after ourselves. If we don't look after ourselves, we cannot look after those around us. So we do really need to think about that. I think particularly in the UK, and I think probably in America as well, we've almost been taught that take, putting yourself first is selfish. But actually, if you don't have that self-care, if you aren't looking after yourself, if you aren't being mindful, if you aren't flourishing, you can't care for those around you. What's also important is that environment. And it's not about having an expensive environment. It's actually about making what you have cosy and warm and inviting. Now, you may notice on my chair, I have this um, shawl, well, throw. And actually, it was the first thing I ever crocheted. Um, and actually, although, you know, it's, it's not the best piece of work, I rather like it. And I do like to keep it around me. And I do like to have it somewhere where I can use it. And then finally, it's that whole notion of others and community. I think it's really important to engage with your community and to engage with those around you. I think it actually helps ground us and helps us to think about who we are, how we fit in, um, and how the whole of society interacts. And that is part of flourishing and it is part of mindfulness. One of the interesting things about Huga is that they have the concept of cosy colours. Now, my, sh my throw here is not cosy colours. In fact, you can go online and you can find Huga colour charts, which I thought was a bit of a strange concept, but hey, um, they are out there. So the colours that you would associate with Huga tend to be the natural colours, so the browns, the beiges and so on. But that doesn't exclude other colours, so it include, can include some reds, some greens, some navy blues, um, but not always the, the more paler versions. It tends to be the stronger colours that are associated with Huga. And that's important today because I'm going to be talking a bit now about the advent calendar that you would have seen me start in a previous video. Some of you will remember in a previous video, I talked about the fact that I was going to start this advent calendar. I took a, a pattern from Yarnspirations. 
do like their patterns because in fact there's a whole bank of them for both knitting and crocheting and they're all free and they're well written so if I'm out, out, out advocating something to somebody else it's a good idea that they are clear instructions but the I decided at the time that I was going to make quite a lot of changes because the colour scheme on theirs was quite gaudy the background was quite a bit bigger because they put all their pockets across the bottom and I didn't want to do that so I've actually made it a bit smaller and it's big enough um, and what was most important to me was to take a more Hooger um, colour palette so I have the red and the green of Christmas obviously and then really I've taken some other shades of green some beige and some brown which would be within your Hooga colours and the natural materials so these are wooden buttons I really like this advent calendar because it is when I go back to my previous video about heritage and heirloom this will be an heirloom piece it will be something that I pass to one of my children and they'll be able to use it year after year looking at it at the moment you sort of might look at it and think how on earth does that work so the concept obviously is that you, you put the tree decorations in the pockets and each day, according to the number, so starting the first day, you take one of your decorations, in this case a Father Christmas head, and you hang him on the tree. Now where you hang him is entirely up to you. And so across the 24 days of Christmas, so there was day one, this actually is supposed to be a mug of hot chocolate. I'm not sure that I quite get that one, but still, never mind. Uh, day two, there's my, my mug of hot chocolate, and so on. So across the 24 days of Christmas, you have, or you decorate your tree. And finally, on the 24th, as would be expected, um, it's great, isn't it? I have to stand up on my tiptoes to put a, anything on a Christmas tree at the best of times. Uh, there we go the star re re reaches the top of the tree but what you can see is this is a very calm approach but I've taken the pattern and adapted it I'm really quite pleased with the outcome it took me a bit longer than I thought it was the amount of embroidery it drove me insane however I think it's a lovely piece and I do particularly like my little reindeer who will be going on the train at the same time as I did the video on her heritage and heirloom, which I'm finding almost impossible to say, I don't know why I decided to do it, to, to use that title, um, I was starting to make a blanket or throw, and that's been a bit on one side at the moment, but I have to get that finished before Christmas, so I'm going back to it now. And what you'll see is that, um, like the other things today, it's almost a sort of hygge approach to colour. I've got these three colours and those are the only colours I'm using. Actually, that's, that is a bit of a, a, a lie because I have these one or two squares that have a daisy in the centre of them. But those are just one off, so they have to, got the yellow. But otherwise, it's all the navy, the off-white and the denim blue and they're going to be put together to make a throw and what I'm actually doing is using a range of different granny squares so the one I'm doing at the moment is a circle granny square which are a bit more unusual because you start with a circle and then you turn it into a square what I might do is do a short on how to make such a granny square and put that up in the near future. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching today. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you've learned a bit about Hygge and how it might be applied in your life. If you have enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, remember to subscribe and to ring the bell and that way each time I upload a video you'll know I've done so. Thank you for watching today and I look forward to seeing you again very soon.